Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. Today we are going over my impromptu guide on how to power level up to the new hard cap in Destiny 2, which is power level 1060. Yeah, if you didn't know, things sometimes change between season to season. And now that we are in season 11, officially, the soft power cap has been raised to 1050, and the hard cap again, which I have mentioned, is now at 1060. I'll explain the difference between the soft cap and the hard cap, but you need to remember or understand Understand if you're new to D2, the difference between powerful engrams and pinnacle engrams. Both powerful engrams and pinnacle engrams will give you stronger power level gear, but the difference between the two is that powerfuls will only get you to power level 1050, which is their absolute maximum. And if you want to go over 1050 and reach the hard cap, of 1060, you can only do so by acquiring pinnacle engrams. So in theory, if you were for whatever reason shooting only for power level 1040, and again, I don't know why you would be doing that, maybe your only goal in the season would be to beat the brand new dungeon, which is recommended power level 140. If for whatever reason that was your only goal for the season, it wouldn't really matter what order you got your engrams in because of the soft cap being 1050, you could in theory just go nuts with however you want to get your drops. But with a capital B, if you're trying to grind up to the hard cap, which again, 1060, the most efficient way to do so would be to earn all of your powerful engrams first all while, quote, filling in the gaps via vendor engrams. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain what all of that means. And then when all of your powerful engram drops are acquired, you move on to pinnacle engram drops. Before I go in depth to what all that means, the final question you have to ask yourself, and this is the same question I asked in my last power level video from season 10, are you a Johnny Day job or a Tommy Tryhard? And what I mean by that is do you plan on going hardcore with your leveling and leveling up all three of your characters as efficiently as you can? Or do you respect your own time and sanity and the sound of doing every activity on every character the entire week feels like it would be an absolute nightmare to you. If you only have the time and energy to level up just one guardian, that's fine, totally normal, but your game plan is what I mentioned earlier. You wanna acquire as many powerful engrams as you can, all while filling in the gaps via vendor drops. Again, I will explain what that means before finally moving on to pinnacle engrams. If you're insane and your plan is to level up all three of your guardians, you Tommy Tryhard you, your plan is a little bit more intense. You should start off on the character you care about the least and finish your weekly engram grinding on whatever character you care about the most. Reason being is that if you grind multiple characters, whatever character you end up grinding the last will be by far the character that benefits the most from your powerful level grinding overall. So if you want your Warlock, for example, to be trials ready by the weekend, begin the week by power leveling your Titan maybe before moving on to your Hunter or vice versa, but finishing the power level grind with your Warlock. As you grind your other two backup guardians, whichever those might be, as you acquire higher gear for them, it's going to be much easier to get your final guardian to a higher starting point which in turn will make their power grinding reach much further than your first two guardians. This is all on the assumption that your guardian is already 10-10 power level from season 10, by the way. If you're a little behind and your guardian isn't yet at power level 10-10, that's fine. Probably just by playing the game, you can find better level gear fairly quickly. Strikes and loss sectors are fast and easy and farmable. You could probably even roll into the Lake of Shadows strike over and over until you've gotten enough gear to push you up to power level 110. But when you ultimately do hit power level 1010, only powerful and pinnacle engrams are going to push you up to 1050. Remember though, we wanna start off by grabbing powerful rewards and saving our pinnacle rewards for later. If you're unsure where powerful engrams drop from, I'm gonna go over every source, but uh, if you forget everything I mentioned in today's video, just to open your directory, any location with this glimmering gold icon indicates that you can get either a powerful or a pinnacle drop 
from that location. Just hover over that specific activity and it'll tell you what you get from completing it. But I've put together a master list for us to go over right now of what we should be doing, starting with every powerful engram source currently in Season 11. Complete 8 Gambit Bounties acquired from the Drifter. Complete 8 Gunsmith Bounties acquired from Banshee. Complete 8 Crucible Bounties acquired from Shax. Complete 8 Vanguard Bounties acquired from Zavala. Complete 4 matches of the Crucible Rotator Playlist. That would be the top two game types which rotate each and every week. Complete three runs of the Nightfall of the Ordeal at any difficulty level. Complete the current weekly Flashpoint, currently the first week of Season 11. That would be the Tangled Chore. Complete three Nightmare Hunts on any difficulty level. Currently, you can run the Dominus Gall Nightmare Hunt, which is absurdly easy to breeze through. Complete the current replayable story mission on the moon and complete the Eris Morn memory questline. Quick note on that though, if you've completed that already on your Guardian, then you can still get a powerful engram from Eris by completing weekly bounties. Here's one that not a lot of people know about. By going to bungie.net slash rewards and opting into the Bungie Rewards program, you can claim a one-time powerful engram, which will be sent directly to the Postmaster the next time you sign in. Yes, I'm being completely serious about that, by the way. Free engram. Of course, you can't claim it every week, but you should definitely go grab that one right now. Next, you have your Clan Rewards Powerful Engram, which, by the way, we are now reaching Tier 2 of Powerful Engrams, which drop slightly stronger than Tier 1 Powerful Engrams. Ideally, if you want to be perfectly optimal, you want to get every Tier 1 Powerful Engram done before moving on to Tier 2. The next Tier 2 Powerful is brand new. Activate and complete the Contact Public Event, currently available on Planet IO. You have to run it several times. Each time you complete it, you'll advance your progress bar a little by little until hitting 100%, which is when you'll receive your powerful Tier 2 Engram. After that, there are just two more sources of powerful drops that I know of that are not listed in the directory, but you have to be careful with these. The first is the Pit of Heresy dungeon activity back on the moon. Again, that is the old dungeon, not the new one. I know that when you hover over it, it'll say it rewards a pinnacle reward, which we are trying to save for later. But the thing is, while completing portions of the dungeon, you will be rewarded with powerful gear along the way. If my memory is right, I think the first two drops in the Pit of Heresy are powerful drops. So if you want to be optimal, and I know you do, do the Pit of Heresy dungeon until you get two powerful drops right up until the end of the Chamber of Suffering encounter. When you've completed that Chamber of Suffering encounter and you've got your second powerful drop, bail out of that dungeon unless you are ready to finally start grabbing pinnacle gear, in which case continue to the boss fight. The other source of powerful not listed in the directory is the brand new Prophecy Dungeon, which dropped day one of season 11. Again, hovering over the activity shows you will get a pinnacle for completing the activity, but that's for taking down the boss and completing the dungeon overall. I haven't tackled the dungeon yet as of the recording of this video, but I'd imagine there are several, I don't know how many, powerful engrams that drop between the beginning of the dungeon and the final boss fight. When you reach what you believe might be the final boss, and I'm sure as time goes on in season 11 and dungeon guides begin to come out, we'll know who and what the final boss is. Be sure to save the checkpoint and back out if you still have other powerful engrams to acquire elsewhere. Quick note, while grinding out your powerful engrams for the week, be sure to not step on your own toes. Here's a good example of that. Remember earlier, I told you you gotta complete eight crucible bounties. Well, make sure if you're just starting out to do that, do the rotating PVP game types not the core ones. Finishing four core matches is going to give you a pinnacle engram drop, which again, we want to save for later, while finishing four rotating game types gives you a powerful. Okay, while doing this, it's important to make sure that every now and then you check your guardian's gear level and make sure that all your gear is somewhat evenly leveled. That's not always going to be the case though, and if your gear isn't evenly leveled, you need to take a quick break and go to an NPC vendor who gives engrams in exchange for some kind of token. Not just any vendor though, as mentioned in my last power leveling video, you need to check this website, vendorengrams.xyz. 
weird looking website, I know, but very handy to have nearby. This website right here will tell you who is currently giving out gear that is oddly high. It's RNG based and it rotates constantly, but this website helps you keep track. When I was recording this video, Commander Zavala was listed as dropping high tier loot. When I checked my Guardian, all of her gear was around the same power level except for her helmet which was severely lagging behind in the power level department. The reason that can be bad is that if you have one or two pieces of gear that are severely behind in the power level area, it's going to bring your overall, quote, maximum power of equipable gear number down. I know that's a fancy string of words I just laid out, but maximum power of equipable gear is just the average power level of all your gear added up together minus the bonus given by your artifact. If you open Dim or Destiny Item Manager, you can quickly hover over the little icon that looks like a Spartan helmet to find out your Guardian's current maximum power of equipable gear. Whatever that number is, if you go to a vendor to get high level gear drops, all the gear is going to drop at that number. If you don't use Destiny Item Manager, I think you're a monster, but you can also just open up your season rank tab and hover over any piece of armor you have yet to acquire. That should tell you directly what your maximum power of equipable gear number currently is. Our goal is to make sure we take care of that number and keep it high, which is harder to do when you have one or two pieces of gear severely lagging behind. Again, back to my example, I noticed my warlock's helmet was far behind her other gear in power level, so I checked vendorengrams.xyz to see which vendors were dropping higher than normal gear. I went to that vendor, in this case Commander Zavala, I turned in tokens for gear until I got a helmet from him, and boom, now all my gear is relatively even at the same power level, and I can continue grinding out powerful engrams. Just be sure that every now and then you check your guardian, and if any of their gear is lagging severely behind your quote maximum power of equipable gear number, you check vendor engrams.xyz and go turn in tokens at whatever vendor is dropping high until you get a new piece of armor that replaces the old one that was lagging behind power-wise. <sighs> okay, when you're finally at either A, power level 1050, or B, you have finished all your powerful engrams for that week, aka there are literally no powerful drops left for you to go after, you can now move on to acquiring pinnacle engrams. Here is every source currently available in Season 11. Complete the Means to an End questline, that's the brand new story quest you get automatically in Season 11, by the way. Complete the brand new Prophecy Dungeon, aka Kill the Final Boss. Complete the old Pit of Heresy Dungeon, aka Kill the Final Boss. Complete four Crucible matches in any core playlist, which are the main playlists in the middle of your selection screen in Crucible. Complete three Gambit matches of any kind. Complete three strikes in the Vanguard Strike playlist while matching the corresponding Elemental Burn. Complete a Nightfall of the Ordeal with a team score over 100,000. Complete the Garden of Salvation raid, which has several drops along the way. Complete a Nightmare Hunt on Master Level Difficulty, which, quick side note, currently is at 1080 power level requirement, so good luck with that last one. On a personal note, when I get to the point where I'm trying to grind out my pinnacle engrams, I'm probably going to save the Garden of Salvation until I maybe get to a point where I notice that my energy weapon's power level is lagging behind the rest of my gear. Reason being is that the Garden of Salvation raid is notorious for dropping a lot of energy weapons. It's literally possible to go through the entire raid and get nothing but energy weapon drops. It's kind of annoying, doesn't always happen, but you know, bad RNG. So me, personally, I will do other pinnacle engram activities, and if I notice, hey, I haven't gotten an energy weapon to drop in a while, well, sounds like it's a perfect time for a Garden of Salvation raid. And that's pretty much it. If you have the patience to power level only one character, no problem, I don't blame you. If you really want to go hardcore and do this on multiple characters, save the final character grind for whichever character you care about the most, because that is the character that will have the highest power level 
at the end of your grinding overall. Quick TLDR, get to power level 1010, which you can do by grinding strikes or playing the game. When you've hit that level, you gotta chase down every powerful engram that you can. While doing that, make sure you're checking vendor engrams.xyz if you have any gear that is severely lagging behind and go replace that lagging gear with a piece of new gear from a vendor who is dropping high. And when you're done with all of that trash, finally grind out your pinnacle engram rewards, rinse and repeat each week and boom, you will be at the max power cap in no time. Remember, if you see any guardians above power level 1060 and think to yourself, hey, wait a minute, Fallout said that was the hard cap. Right, but remember that the seasonal artifact can be leveled up forever with no cap, and that will help contribute to your overall power level. If you found this video helpful, please three tap that like button and help push me towards my personal goal of complete world domination. Be sure to tune into my Twitch channel because, hey, I'm a full-time content creator these days, and for some reason, a lot of people out there still don't know that I stream on Twitch almost every day. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.